Omicron. <laughs> Most of the people are now scared of this term Omicron, which is a Greek word and it's a Greek alphabet. Now, uh, now if anybody will be asked about Omicron, this media uh, it's hyping so much this virus nowadays in all in all forums in all uh, sectors in all uh, print media electronics media in all media we are just listening one terminology called omicron about a new covid virus vi variant which has become you know one of the most dreadful uh, virus that has been cited by uh, world health organization uh, for the community and as all of us know that uh, the whole world is suffering from this pandemic for the last couple of years. India is, you know, is the leading uh, country which has been very, I mean, worstly affected by this virus, and it is at currently at second position in the number of patients affected. Uh, as far as this variant is concerned, uh, it is first detected in uh, South Africa on 24th of uh, November, and uh, WHO has claimed it to be variant of concern on 26th of November uh, this year uh, just because of the fact uh, that there are a lot of you know different types of mutations which has been detected uh, in this virus uh, particularly the antigenic character of this virus antigen antigen is something which causes the disease in a human body so uh, spike protein is the antigen which is present in this uh, virus uh, this in this coronavirus group of uh, viruses so omicron has got more than 30 different mutations in the uh, uh, coronavirus this this variant particularly if we uh, go a little back in our time then uh, with delta virus we have got only couple of mutations with the spike protein and uh, which has created so much of hue and cry in the community the whole, across India, pan India. People, so many young people died, so many old people died, so many unexpected uh, deaths happened. Uh, you know, just because of the fact that not only this virus is uh, very attacking and very virulent. I mean, having a severity of the disease to be, you know, worse than any any other respiratory illness. Along with that, the number of patients uh, that is presented to a hospital, the burden, the disease burden, the patient's burden to a hospital, to a healthcare infrastructure was so much that because of just oxygen scarcity, because of just, just a lack of oxygen, so many people died. So if we compare Delta virus with that of the Omicron virus, then Omicron virus has got at least 15 times more uh, mutations than that of a Delta virus. So, as far as pandemic is concerned, usually the second spike is the worst spike usually happens in a pandemic. After that, the pandemic becomes an endemic over a period of time in which it becomes restricted to a geographical area. It will be restricted to a geographical area. Till that time, this virus will be surviving. So, now uh, this Omicron virus, in compared to Delta virus, suppose say it has got 15 times more than mutations uh, in compared to delta virus if delta virus has caused uh, you know so many deaths and you know so many hospitalizations uh, in a country like india so just imagine the type of transmissibility that this virus will have now if i go to dr olivier's uh, statement about uh, the patients those have those who have come to uh, her in her clinic in south africa pretoria uh, she has presented that most of the patients who has been infected with this virus, I mean detected with this virus, uh, they have presented with severe body pain and weakness and a scratchy throat but not of any other typical symptoms of coronavirus that has been presented with the first and second wave like with uh, uh, loss of smell or test or uh, fever for a long time with uh, you know uh, COVID pneumonia. So most of the people are, and are presenting with severe body pain and weakness and with a scratchy throat some may have little fever or mild fever but uh, after a certain uh, point of time these patients are developing pneumonia and serious coagulative disorders which is causing heart attack and uh, brain strokes and other uh, coagulative uh, 
diseases so uh, we exactly do not know what comicron is going to uh, do uh, with these complications but yes uh, according to them according to uh, south africa's uh, press meet or uh, statements uh they are saying that most of the patients presenting with omicron variant they are asymptomatic they usually are recovering uh, very well but uh, the hospitalization rate the amount of patients who's got admitted to the hospitals it is increased and mortality also increased uh they are also saying that this is not probably due to the virus per se they are expecting this uh, type of hospitalization and uh, morbidity or mortality due to number of patients being affected and number of patients getting admitted to a hospital so that is basically related to the transmissibility of this virus uh, it has been said uh, that this omicron virus is six times more transmissible than delta virus suppose say in covid uh first wave uh the alpha virus what was there i mean like in the first wave it has got uh suppose say transmi- transmissibility of 1 then delta virus has transmissibility of 5 times more than that of alpha virus and this omicron is 6 times more than that of delta virus so it is very much transmissible it can affect more than 100 people at a time and one person can infect 100 people at a time and according to the previous statements which has been stated by world health organization regarding this delta virus after so many of researches that it is being transmitted through air so uh, definitely we are going to expect this omicron virus to be transmitted by air again so if this is so and if there will be a blast then the number of hospitalization in our country will be very much and probably will not be able to of combat the, this this uh, wave if if this happens if this blast happens then probably will be you know uh, struggling to combat with this uh, this uh, phase i mean this wave of the pandemic uh, why so because now our health in- healthcare infrastructure is exhausted our finance is exhausted our political uh, you know uh, platform is exhausted people uh, mentally physically they are exhausted so many people uh, they have lost their life financially also they are overburdened burden so a lot of constraints are there so if this third wave happens uh, of this omicron in the in this particular uh, uh, suppose say in this particular time then it will become very critical for all of us for the healthcare uh, personnel for the public for the community for everybody for the government for everybody to fight with this situation so uh, it is my sincere request to all of you uh, through this channel that you should take care of all these things i'm like the only three things that is there to prevent this infection is again the three brahmastras uh, i w- i would rather say that is mass hand sanitization and social distancing and along with that vaccination is definitely key to uh, it's uh, you know to prevention for for the prevention of this disease because according to the previous data just a day before yesterday uh, there is one data which has been published in uh, bbc news because see we we, we are living in a country uh, we are just a followers right uh, in the first wave also we are not the first country to be hit it has started from china so we have to take lessons from those countries who has already combated with this uh, type of disease previously so in similar fashion suppose uh, if we uh, take an example for say uh, britain is now uh, suffering the most uh, with omicron variant after south africa suppose uh, yesterday's data what uh, what i have got is like uh, around 50 4000 people are getting positive every day and uh, reported deaths is around 30 to 40 deaths per day so uh, and their health secretary they are uh, stating that uh, within 48 hours uh, the dominant variant in the united kingdom will be omicron so just imagine within a month of time if the delta variant which was which used to be the predominant variant uh, in that country is now con- is getting converted into omicron variant within a month then just imagine what could be the possibility in a country like india so it is definitely a worrisome uh, thing for us because the number has increased from 39 to 59 in a day and it will get multiplied in terms of you know thousands and probably uh, genome sequencing which is a method to detect this variant uh, has to be uh, done uh, this flow sequence uh, we have got a flow sequence team working in kerala we have got flow sequencing team uh, in different parts of the country 
and uh, it is very costly also and one flow sequence uh, that's kit uh, costs around 1.2 lakhs rupees so and 96 sample can be tested in uh, in a single shot so uh, active surveillance active case detection immediate and bold steps in the uh, you know uh, airport bus stops i mean bus stations i mean railway stations all these areas has to be uh, you know the, the cases has to be detected and uh, under active surveillance in these hotspots because whatever cases has been detected in india till date are having some kind of travel history but if you go uh, by the you know reports of yesterday then in uh, mumbai's uh, case uh, there are a couple of patients who has been detected with omicron variant they do not have any travel history that means uh, it is restricted to those people who are in contact with the persons coming from outside suppose say if they are in a strict uh, quarantine period then how come the persons without any travel history uh, can have this uh, omicron variant in their uh, covid positive st uh, status so it is not possible so it may be possible that there are a lot of uh, omicron patients would have been there but that is submerged so whatever we are seeing is just a tip of the iceberg probably a lot of patients are also there which is not been detected and probably in the due course of time they will be detected so we're just waiting uh, for that time and regarding the virulence and uh, transmissibility uh, of the disease transmissibility is already been proved in different countries of the world so there is nothing much to talk about that uh, regarding the virulence if we talk about that then uh, how far severe this disease will be uh, time will only tell because it will it will be very premature to uh, predict anything any any consequence of the disease that is going to happen in future but uh, yes uh, we are very hopeful that this should be a milder this should be uh, a milder form of the virus because say if if i'll go back to the uh, virus uh, dynamics uh, virus natural history then uh, there is always three things uh, which exist that is agent host and environment agent is the virus host is human being and environment is something which is affecting the virus and human also so uh, it is being hypothesized that the virus is also trying to survive why because most of the persons in the world has been vaccinated now they are having some kind of immunity towards this virus all over the world so virus is also struggling to survive so in that case it is being hypothesized that this virus probably would have gone to a, some a, some persons who is immunocompromised like an hiv patient like a hiv patient in which it is trying to uh, survive and by the process of survival probably it has got so many mutations in its uh, spike proteins and that virus has been expelled to the air and somebody else would have contacted with this virus and again the chain of transmission has started like that that is this is one hypothesis the other hypothesis is there is some environmental effect this is causing some problems i mean some some changes in the viruses so so probably that could have been the one one more reason why this virus has uh, mutated so much now coming to the virulence fact uh, part of the disease that uh, how far uh, severe will be uh, this disease uh, i mean omicron affected persons will be that time will tell it will be very preliminary uh, i mean very preliminary data says uh, that ki this is a milder form usually uh, what happens if this much of mutation happens in a virus then probably the virus becomes weak that we have seen in other uh, viruses other group of viruses not in covid virus cases uh, but again covid virus is a surprise for all of us uh, when it started in 2019 so we do not know again we cannot predict anything in this omicron variant also so uh, it will be very premature to say about the consequences let us wait let us watch but till that time we need to be very careful and uh, you know all precautionary measures uh, should be taken uh, because uh, if something happens we do not have a second chance to think about and by that time we would have lost our near dear, near and dear ones and uh, probably we cannot go back so why not to uh, take care of ourselves beforehand so that at least we can save ourselves at the same time with our loved ones too so uh, it's my sincere request uh, that do not take this virus very lightly uh, and do not go by the uh, do, you know different versions of the people or any statements which has been stated Uh, we have to take this variant also very seriously and do whatever is possible uh, and you know government is also uh, doing his level best to uh, take steps take necessary steps to prevent the spread 
but at the same time it should not be political uh, every human life is important and uh, you know uh, we have to combat with this situation we have to tackle with this situation and we'll have to get out of it so and one more thing i just need to add uh, in india almost more than 100 crore vaccination has been done but still uh, as uk data says if third vaccination or i mean the booster dose booster jab is been taken by a person then it is giving 70 to 75% protection against this new variant if this is so if this data is correct then probably uh, i'll request uh, who is whoever is watching this video uh, they should go for a booster jab uh, for all of the citizens of india uh, so that at least we can be you know at least uh, we can do something for for the protection of uh, our community uh, for our loved ones so that uh, we can stop the spread of this disease thank you